and welcome to my mess and in this video you will learn why less toys is better for your child and for yourself and as well you will learn how to minimize all this mess as you see this is all toys from all of my house and I did it in proper so today is the clinic time in this world of social media we are easily distracted we advertise this toy will help your child to develop this skill and that skill and you absolutely need this because your child wouldn't survive with without mm. that and then of course grandparents and friends and everyone want to give some kind of toys and basically you end up with this oh my god what to do so is it really everything necessary no actually it is very distracting when i have a lot of toys out sophie all the time comes to me why because for child it is information overload child don't know which toy to take should i play with his dog i mean with this or better with mommy yes with mommy because mom know what to do and he cannot choose what when you remove the toy overload and have only simplified toys it is easier less toys promote creativity because first of all when there are information overload for a child because this is information Ooh, because this is an information overload for a child what's Mommy. happening <laughs> so what's happening is the child don't know which toy to take and what to do and it's totally it's really stressful for a child and currently sophie is all over me all the time just because she don't know what to do what toy to choose her favorite mega plugs uh, well she's not interested in them anymore because she's trying to, to actually use each and every toy so here comes even when we uh, look at the adults when we have information a lot of something we cannot focus as well for example if you are a baker and you have a choice now of 30 different piping bags and piping uh, uh, tips and whatever else and like it might be like oh my god which one to use which is better and of course until you try them all it will be just too much so if at the same time two different two people one has one piping bag and few tips and the second one has a lot of piping bags and a lot of different tips and it might be if they're not really professional so they don't know all about them they might be over, like overstimulated and frustrated cannot make a decision what actually better to use and what kind of they create so when you have less you have less choice the decision is made quicker and it doesn't matter currently which tool is better it is about making a job and the job will be done after you make a decision so and sometimes you may even choose from this um, big variety and you think well maybe it is not the right one maybe i will just switch to different one you know so the same happens with the child that's why they're not focused and when you remove the overload of the choice yes this is what's happening you heard her As you see, she has no idea what she wants. She wants everything at the same time. So here comes why it will benefit you as a parent to have less toys. First of all, less cleaning, no mess. Second thing is your child is always busy, especially if you divide your small part of toys into two bits and hide one, and then um like i do every two three weeks i exchange the toys even with this amount of the toys uh and then it are new fresh toys when i see that sophie is more often clingy i hide the toys and remove new ones because i know she's tired she's looking for something new that's why she's she comes to me and and want to be entertained but actually play time a long play time is a children's work and they absolutely can't do that they need an interaction with you as a parent but they need a long time where they are focused and they're doing their job exploring how the toy works creating 
um, new ideas and things. And sometimes it is even better not to interrupt the interaction with the boy by telling, oh, he's talking to this, you do something wrong. Because this is the imagination and creation. It doesn't matter if it doesn't fit our thoughts about uh, it doesn't fit how it works actually in, in the world. It totally doesn't matter. It is about the child and the toy, about their work, about creating and developing themselves. So now let's talk about how to actually deal with this. So I like since I give a birth to Sophie. I started to focus on minimalistic approaches to remove as much as possible. And actually, even before unconsciously, I was doing the clutter like two year, two times in a year. So a minimalistic approach is basically is definitely not this. I haven't done it for a while uh, because most of the toys are hidden, and then I have only a few toys out. But now it's too many. So what to do with them? There are a few things that what I could suggest. Take all toys out, and it doesn't matter, you can do with any cleaning, even like with your clothes, the same. Take everything out, put it in the same room, everything. And if you didn't took and you didn't find something, when you find this toy and you didn't remember about it, you have to throw it away and get rid of it. Because if you couldn't remember and couldn't find, you don't need this, 100%. So, sorry for the noise. Let's talk about toys that we need to get rid of. First of all, these are toys that has missing parts or they are broken. They are out. Um, I think this will be an easy part. The second thing, very specific toys that then they have only one purpose and actually don't do anything else, especially if your child don't play with it. If it is like a guitar, so obviously this uh, guitar has only one function to play on a guitar, but your child really loves that. Even if it is a toy, I will still keep it because this is by developing a skill tank on the guitar and then you can uh, buy a real one. But otherwise, if the toy doesn't serve any different purpose as only by being a guitar, there is no point to keep if your child especially is not interested in that. Third one is toys that play by themselves, like this musical stand. It doesn't do, and actually it kind of can fit in the category that it is um, not very specific because it can do only what the buttons press, so there is no imagination. The child have to hear only what the button says. So basically, it's like two in one thing. And most of the time, these um, items are really annoying as well with the sound. So if the item is annoying, playing music on the buttons, this is not something that will help you develop your child. Um, and as well, if the toy is annoying, it annoys you, so you might leash out on your child because he's using this toy. So why to keep it? Well, just hide it, throw it away, get rid of, gift it, peace in mind, <laughs> peace in your mind. Number five is getting rid of duplicate toys. Number six is getting rid of toys that causes aggression and violence. So it is okay if you have a boy and he wants to have a guns and maybe like knives or um, swords. It's normal for the boys to be willing to play with that kind of toys. But if it causes not only playing imagination that he's a hero and he fights, but he actually hurts other people or even animals with that, you need to remove these toys that can actually harm. Um, in order that your child learns how to how to be safe and how to play actually with other people by not causing anyone. Mama! Yes, Mama! All gone. All gone? Нет, вот там еще есть. А, мама? Number seven is getting rid of ugly toys, probably old ones, which you cannot do anything about it. If your child is really hurt, or, um, uh, hurt is his word? Um, the person who actually stalks a lot and he just cannot um, let it go. It's, it is different video and you can comment down below if you want to know and if your child has this problem. I can definitely record and tell you how to minimize it and how actually to help your kid to give this and give this to her away. Uh, so the number eight is about, you know, these things that appears only for a short period of time and they're very popular like a spinner or so, um, fidgets, popular for a short period of time. Everyone needs to have that. You definitely don't need to have them. So, and the last thing, uh, this is something you need to think about it. This is suggestion. 
and I'm not standing on this 100% because I'm still keeping those toys. These are toys that are from ad, ads and are from cartoons, like for example, like Mickey. These are popular toys and especially like Elsa was recently or Sophie the first and because my daughter is Sophie, my dad is going crazy about buying. I have Sophie doll, she already have a couple of notebooks and she don't even write. That kind of things for small children, they are not needed at all. For elderly children who actually knows what it is and they're getting crazy, well, if your child is in love with some character, you might need to get some toys, but be careful with going all over because it means that this toy cannot have a purpose. Um, what Elsa do? Elsa is a snow queen and she has her powers, nothing else. Everything what she did in the movie, this is exactly the same what the child will imagine about this character. They, they, they cannot use imagination which is out of the movie. Any other toy, they can. So that is why it is advised not to buy many toys because I understand that it is almost impossible to, no! <laughs> to not to buy. Just buy with a limit. This is my advice. And please comment down below what you think. Are you actually into giving in, uh, to your kids and buying the toys that they want? Do you think it is important to buy toys like Elsa and from other different movies? And subscribe to my channel. So these are the part of toys that I'm keeping, uh, the plush toys. I don't like this big teddy bear, but this is her favorite toy. She cannot go sleep without him. I think he's ugly. It's actually a toy that I was gifted like a way long time ago by, by my partner. <laughs> and I want to really get rid of it. Well, I hope that I can replace it with this dragon. It is super cute. She really likes it, but she never slept with him. So we'll see how it works. For now, I'm keeping. Otherwise, who knows what kind of struggle we will have at night. So these are the toys that I'm selling. And I decided to sell, sell as well shelves because this is not what we're using. This is my toys that I will bin. These are toys that are going to charity. Mostly they are soft toys. And these are toys that I'm keeping. And actually, as you see, the teddy bear that she so much like, I decided to, to be in it. She went sleep with some different toys and I hope that she will forget about it. So I'm keeping one right on. I do keep two puzzles, although I said duplicates have to go on. The puzzle that you see with the animals, it is the easy one, but she's not really into puzzles because she doesn't have patience for them. Um, she can solve only a few at a time. So for now is this, and then I have more complicated puzzle, as you see this one underneath. It is for future, so I wouldn't count them as duplicates because this is what she cannot do at the same time. As soon as it will be too easy, it is going away, and I'm bringing this on. And I'm keeping two sets of blocks. They will go together because she, uh, the blocks in the box are different shape, and that these blocks have letters. So although it have two blocks and I should get rid of supposedly but they do different things and you can still use them together in order to create so I'm keeping um, I keep quite a lot of plush toys I would like to cut them at least in half but because I'm not so sure what she likes we always have so many toys and she she used to touch at least for a while these toys so I will be keeping an eye if she's not using any of these toys it will be gone Thank you very much for watching my videos and I really appreciate any comments and uh, any suggestions about what you would like to know. And see you in the next video guys. Bye!